Welcome back to Voice First Tech. Today, we'd like to offer you a challenge, or more of a quest, to display your abilities as a voice app developer, or to learn how to develop your first voice app if you've never built one before. The Dev Quest by Voice First Tech shows you how to build your first voice app, very simple, with unit tests and a launch screen. Deploy it on both Google and Amazon Alexa, and then test it on your devices. Let's get started. Check the description below to find the link for our GitHub page where you'll see the DevQuest repository. You'll copy the clone link from GitHub and then open up a terminal. You're going to change directory into your projects folder and then create a new directory. Call it DevQuest or whatever you would like. Go inside of the new folder that you created and that's where we're going to clone the GitHub repository. After you've cloned the repository, you should see the folder DevQuest, which you should now change directory into. I'm going to create the first one, the first project, and you create your project by running Jovo new, and then your name, your first name, followed by your username on GitHub. The first name is so that we understand who's part of the community, and the GitHub username is so that we can find you. A little bit easier, to, no matter what platform someone discovers your code on. Running Jovo new and then the name of your directory will go ahead and set up that Jovo project. After that we'll want to change our branch. We'll want to check out a new branch and I recommend calling that branch feature forward slash the name of your repository. What this is going to do is it's going to make our pull requests a little bit easier and just make our GitHub, our Git tree, our commit tree a little bit cleaner. Once you've checked out that branch, go ahead and open up your IDE of choice and then add the project to your IDE. I personally like Atom, so I'll link Atom in the description below. You can use Visual Studio, you can use Sublime, you could even use Notepad++ if you'd like. Whichever you decide, you're going to go ahead and open up the project and open up the app.js folder. This is where the majority of your coding for your voice apps gets done. We don't need the welcome or hello world or that assistant intent, so we're going to go ahead and delete those. Now let's create our first test case, and I'll call it launch test. At Voice First Tech, we do test-driven development, so having test cases is critical to ensure that our clients and our customers are working with scalable apps that will never break, or when they do break, that we can fix them and then make sure that that problem never happens again. Next, we'll need to install our testing framework, which is going to be npm install mocha, double dash save hyphen dev, and then npm install chai, double dash save hyphen dev. Then we'll expect and require chai, and we'll require the Jovo framework, specifically the platform request builder. And then also from the Jovo framework, we'll need the test suite. Put in a for loop where we iterate over both Alexa skills and Google Actions. And then paste in a new test group where we'll put in just one test to start with. A test group is labeled with a describe function and an individual test is labeled with an it function. So inside of the describe, I'm going to put the name of my test group and inside of the it, I'm going to make a simple sentence that says what my test is supposed to do. For my first test, it's a launch test in the launch test group, and it should introduce Patrick Sweetman. Now I'll change up the test case a little bit so that it actually hits the intent that I want it to hit, and then expects the response that I want it to expect. You might be asking yourself, why is he writing test cases before he's even written his app code? The answer is, at Voice First Tech, we use test-driven development. We start by writing a test case. After we've written the test case, those test cases should fail because we've never written code yet. Once we have a failing test case, then we write only enough code to get it to pass. This makes it so that your code is more modular. You can make better commits, and all of your commits are grouped appropriately. You don't write excess code, and you don't just write code to figure out what it is you're doing. By writing the test cases first, you've clearly defined the functionality that it is you're trying to build out. 
So I'm just entering some text. We'll make this app an introduction to myself, which is what the quest is. An introduction to yourself as a voice app developer. Make this app so that way you can show it to future clients and customers and employers. In the future, once you publish this, you'll be able to send recruiters links to this app so that way they can launch it on Google Assistant or Amazon Alexa and they can see what you're capable of. So in here I've labeled who I am, how long I've been working with voice apps, some of my other projects, my university. You can list whatever you'd like, just make this an introduction to you. It does not need to be overly complicated. The main purpose of this quest is to prove that you can and are able to use Git. Use the terminal in Bash to be able to use an IDE to code a basic application in JavaScript. There's a lot of different things that we're applying. There's a lot of there's a lot of different applied learnings going on here that we're applying all at the same time. Once we've finished, we'll run Jovo Run on one terminal, and then on another terminal, we're going to run our test cases. We need two terminals because the Jovo Run, that starts up a server that's running our voice application as a backend on Node.js. Uh-oh. As you can see, on this first run, we got error, no test specified. That means we need to go into our package.json file and actually declare a test script for Mocha to run, which is going to be Mocha test double dash recursive. Just in case, I'll restart the server and run the test cases again. Looks like the first test failed, and both tests have failed. This is exactly what we wanted to happen. Now that our tests are failing, we can go in and update the code only enough to get our test cases to pass. And we'll do that by copying our response and pasting it into our app.js. We'll relaunch the server because we have modified our app folder. We'll copy the link and then this time I'm going to show you the Jovo debugger. This is a great user interface that gives a little bit more details than the terminal does. So now when we run our tests, we'll see in the debugger the responses that we expected, as well as our passing test cases. So now we know that both on Amazon Alexa and on Google Home, when we launch the app, we get the response that we expect. So now we'll host our code, rather than running it locally with Jovo Run, we'll host it on AWS, all for free, no money required, Search AWS, and then log into your account. If you don't already have an account, set one up and make sure you select the free tier. You should never really have to pay with AWS unless you're really doing some massive computation. Search for Lambda, which is a serverless function executor. We'll create a new function, and I'm going to call it DevQuest. Make sure that you're using Node.js 6.10 and then choose the basic Lambda execution role. If you don't already have it, run a quick Google search for set up basic Lambda execution role. Scroll down and select, instead of uploading a file or manually editing a file, select upload zip. Then we'll go to our DevQuest folder and create that zip real quick. You're just going to select all of the files in your project folder and then zip them together and label them whatever name you want, it doesn't matter. Once you've created the zip, you're going to select the zip and upload it to AWS Lambda. Click Save, get a quick test case, just search in the Configure Test Event for Alexa and click the Alexa Start Session and save that. Now when we run our tests, we can see the actual response that we get in AWS Lambda. That's our backend, that's where our code is hosted, the Node.js backend code. Now we need to set up the front end part of our Alexa skill, which is done on Amazon Developer. <coughs> Again, log in with your AWS account. And then go to your Skills tab. You're going to click the Create Skill button 
and name your skill dev quest or whatever you'd like this to be named i recommend dev quest leave start from scratch and click next there's only a couple things we need to do to get this working the first is to get the AWS Lambda ARN. Copy the skill ID of your skill and then go back to AWS Lambda and add Alexa Skills Kit. Make sure that North Virginia is your region, otherwise you won't be able to see Alexa Skills Kit as an option. Paste the skill ID in and then click Save. Test again and you should see everything still working. Now we can copy the ARN at the top of the Lambda function ARN stands for Amazon Resource Number. We'll paste that into the default region section and click Save. Then go over to your Invocation tab and change your invocation name to something that uh, is not dev-quest. In my case, I'm just going to make it my test app to make it simple. I'm going to create a new intent called Launch. The names need to be exactly spelled the same as what it is in our Node.js code. Give it a couple sample utterances, Save, and build the model. Saving saves your progress, but what build does, build, building takes the individual files and then compiles it into an actual application. Once the build process is done, go over to the test tab. Slide the slider to enable testing, and then say launch, and then your invocation name. You should see your app is working perfectly. We got the response from our backend. You can now test this on any of your Alexa enabled devices, whether in the Amazon Alexa app, on an Amazon Echo Dot, Amazon Echo Spot, Amazon Echo Show. You can now try the app you built on any of your devices. Just say Alexa, launch, and then the name of your action or the name of your skill. Let's head over to Actions on Google to build the Google Action or the app on Google Assistant. We'll add a project and again, name it DevQuest. Click Create Project. Go into the Actions tab and click Add Your First Action and then Build. That's going to open another tab with Dialogflow. Once in Dialogflow, you'll create the agent just as it is. And then we'll need to set up an API gateway for our AWS Lambda function. Go back to AWS and open the API Gateway service. Create a new API, label it DevQuest, and then Create. We'll create a new method by clicking on Actions, Create Method, and then Post. That way, anytime Google Assistant sends a post request to our service, we'll just route that traffic right back to our AWS Lambda function. Let's copy the name of our AWS Lambda function. In my case, it's dev-quest-voice-first-tech. I'll paste that right into the Lambda function box and click Save. Give the, give the API Gateway permission, and then click Actions, Deploy API, to a new stage, which we'll call Test. Once the API is deployed, you'll get a URL, which we can copy and paste into the Fulfillment section of Dialogflow. We can then go over to the simulator and start testing. We'll enter the test phrase, talk to my test app, uh-oh. It looks like our app responded with, hi, how are you doing? That's not what we expected. Let's check it out. Go into your intents tab into the default welcome intent and scroll all the way down to the bottom to the fulfillment section. In there, make sure that enable webhook call for this intent is checked. Unlike Amazon, on Google, you can either enable your webhook, which will call your Node.js function, or you can pre-program in responses. Go over and test again, and we can see that this time, when we talk to my test app, we get the appropriate response. You can now test your action on both all of your Alexa devices and also all of your Google devices. Just say, OK Google, talk to my test app. Let's jump back into the terminal. Next, we'll check the status of our repository. And it looks like we've added a new file, which we did. It was, for me, the Patrick Sweetman, the feature, or the 
In my case, it was the Sweetman Tech branch, the Sweetman Tech folder. We'll run git add to add all of those folders to make them tracked. Then we'll label all of these into one commit, which I'll make Patrick Sweetman Tech. Completed the dev quest. Run status again, see that you're working on a clean tree. And then push to origin the same name of your feature branch. Jump back into GitHub where you can see your new branch and let's review it before we make our pull request. We can see the license, all the other changes like our readme document, and then our app.js which we did do a lot of modifying to. All the way down at the bottom we've even got our test case and we can see that all the code looks exactly how I expect it to. So now we'll create a pull request. This is going to be a request to merge all of your changes from your private branch into master so that everybody can see your code, helping the open source community and improving and encouraging improving the open source community and encouraging collaboration. Once you've merged with master, we'll check out the master branch and then we'll pull from master so that way we can get all the changes we just made with our pull request. Because we're on a different branch, we should check to make sure that the test cases still pass. Running npm test, we can see that all of our tests still pass. So we've successfully completed the dev quest. We now have a functioning Alexa skill and action on Google that you can not only test on all of your devices, but you can publish them live to the Alexa skill store and the actions on Google directory. Once you've published them there, you can share it with any recruiter, with any employer, with any client, so that way they can see what you're able to do. They can see that you've already built and experimented in this field. And also by completing this quest, you're now ready to start building with Voice First Tech. Thanks for joining us, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video tutorial.